Hi everyone, let's take a look at the following grade 12 calculus and vectors limit example. Find the limit of the cube root of x plus 8 minus 4 all over the square root of x minus 40 minus 4 as x is approaching to 56. Step 1. Always plug in 56. So in this case, if you do plug in 56, this is going to give you the cube root of 56 plus 8 minus 4 divided by the square root of 56 minus 40 minus 4. And if you think about this, this is going to be 0 divided by 0, which is indeterminate. So you move on to step 2. And there are two parts to step 2. The first part is you look at the denominator and you apply this concept called the difference of squares. So you're thinking about a square minus b square equals to a minus b times a plus b. So again, these are some of the thoughts you should have in your mind. And you're going to multiply the top and the bottom by exactly the conjugate. So again, effectively, you're multiplying it by 1. But what you're really doing is you're multiplying it by a minus b, a plus b. You're multiplying by this second part right there. So for the reference, in a different color, I'm also going to look at the numerator. And this is the tougher part where you have to think about the difference of cube. So if you think about the difference of cube, um, a minus b times a square plus ab plus b square equals to a cubed minus b cubed. You have to recognize that this is exactly a minus b. What that means is you have to square the first term. And you can copy this at the top and the bottom, which is really the numerator and the denominator. Square that last term. Of course, take the product of the two terms. Now look what happens. I'll use a different color to highlight what we're going to do next. Again, effectively, you're multiplying by 1. Now, using a different color, again, for your reference, here are the parts that you're going to copy and the parts you're going to expand. So if you look at this part, we're going to expand with this part in a moment. Likewise, if you look at the denominator, I'll draw a box here. You're going to multiply that in a moment. So what this means is this is going to be the limit as x is approaching to 56. And again, notice the parts I did not circle. I'm going to copy it. So I'm going to have the square root of x minus 40 plus 4 divided by, again, just copy this. There's no need to do anything else but copy it as is. Okay. Now, if I go back to the first circle here, which again is this times this, that's using the difference of cubes. So you're going to take a cube minus b cube. If you cube a cube root, you're going to get whatever's inside, which is x plus 8. And of course, 4 cube is going to be 64. Don't forget the brackets. Likewise, if you look at this bottom rectangle that I drew, Using the difference of squares, this is going to be a square minus b square. When you square whatever is inside the square root, you copy, which in this case is x minus 40, and of course, 4 square. Now, the difficult part is now over. Look at the first term at the top and the bottom. Isn't that x minus 56 divided by x minus 56, which equals to 1? And that signals to you you're doing it right. You go back to step one, you're gonna plug in 60 or you're gonna plug in 56 in this case for x. Same thing in the denominator. You're gonna plug in x to be 56. When you do that, you would discover, and I'm gonna write it here, running out of space, you would discover that the square, the square root of 56 minus 40 is basically the square root of 16, which is 4. 4 plus 4 is going to be 8. If you look at the denominator, 
that's 16 plus 16 plus 16. So three times 16, which is 48, or the final answer is gonna be one divided by six. Now, the bonus stage or the bonus step is you can always graph this. And if I sketched graph on the upper right corner for you, you would discover that the left limit and the right limit is exactly the same. So again, in a different color, I'm just gonna graph, roughly speaking, the graph that looks like that. This is roughly at 40. And uh, if you think about 56, you would discover that the left limit and the right limit will give you exactly one divided by six. That's how you can double check to make sure that the graph and the algebraic solution is the same, which is a dual mindset that I would like you to activate. If you find this video meaningful, it's adding value to your math life, please comment, like, share, and subscribe. I hope this makes sense.